Hi, I'm Josh, and I scored a raw 50 in maths methods in 2019 and a perfect ATAR in 2020. Algebraic misconceptions are the number one killer in the methods exam. They make you make careless errors and they make you lose easy marks. I've already mentioned some in a previous video, but I've revised my list, so I'm going to go through what I think are the things you should always know. As I've mentioned in the previous video, the number one killer is square roots. x squared equals a, x is equal to plus or minus square root of a. a is also greater than or equal to zero. It can't be negative because you can't square root a negative number in maths methods. The next thing is that you can't solve equations that involve both exponentials and logarithms by hand. For example, if you see above, e to the power of x plus ln of x plus 1 is equal to 0. You can't solve it by hand. You have to use a CAS if there is a solution. And my great year 11 maths methods teacher, Mr. Peckham, told me that. The next thing I'm going to talk about is x-axis intercepts, and this comes up a lot. Let's say we have this cubic, and we've been told that those two points are a0 and b0. What is the equation of this cubic? Let's just pretend that for this question, the coefficient of x cubed is 1. Lots of students think that this is y equals x minus a times x plus b squared. That is wrong. The reason being, b is already negative. You don't know what b is, but b is probably like negative 2 or negative 3 or something. It doesn't actually matter whether b is positive or negative, because its sign is already accounted for when you just have y equals x minus a, x minus b squared, which is the correct answer. Next up, we have increasing and decreasing intervals. And the thing just to remember for that is that stationary points are part of that example. If you have the curve y equals x squared, the strictly decreasing interval is from negative infinity to zero, including zero. The reason for that is because increasing and decreasing are really terms for change. At that single point, it's actually lower than the point that is immediately to the left of it. Therefore, it's still decreasing across that tiny interval. And so you must include that endpoint. Now let's move on to calculus. Number one, plus c, when you're integrating. But however, you don't need that if it says find and antiderivative. If it says find the antiderivative, it's expecting you to give a general formula, which means that you need to plus c. And that was part two of careless errors and how to avoid them.